We sometimes hear in our Wi-Fi world that the appeal of the printed book is on the wane. That would come as news to David Turacamo, our man in Paris. They're one of the most familiar images in Paris, the booksellers along the Seine. Bouquinistes, they're called. And their tradition dates back to the time of the French Revolution. In fact, some of these stalls have been handed down through several generations. And even though many are book lovers, none can match the passion of somebody like... Because there is books there too. His name? There's a paperback section. Sylvain Larose. And this is where he lives. I am a bibliomaniac, <laughs> unfortunately. That's biblio from the Greek word for book and maniac from, well... <laughs> I know where the books are, but sometimes when you don't find the book you want, you become mad. <laughs> Sylvain began reading as a child when he was bedridden for several years with rheumatism. But obviously, something else kicked in. People who collect books do love to read, but collecting the actual physical books is another thing. John Baxter is a writer who chronicled his own obsession for books in a book. Wow. He has half a million volumes. This is the first edition of The Great Gatsby. Most of them in storage, yeah, so he keeps right. only the best and most expensive With, uh, on display. All of first of all, we buy a hardcover copy of a book that we've discovered in paperback. Then we buy a first edition. Then we want it signed. Uh, then we want the deluxe edition. Then we want every edition. <laughs> and so it goes on. <laughs> So more books about books, reference books. All I could think while I was shooting this was, oh man, if I knock over a pile, this guy's going to freak. Anyway, uh, Paris is a paradise for people like him. I mean, besides a weekly market on the outskirts of the city, there are the occasional week-long fairs in public squares and trade shows for the professionals. Not to mention the side streets filled with specialty shops run not by storekeepers, but scholars in their field. And you contrast it to New York. There may be one bookstore in New York, one in Boston. Mm -hmm. There are about 500 in Paris. So figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> the ah, and this man would know. Just ask him. It's the mother love. The best books in the world are in France. This is Martin Stone. He's also a bibliomaniac, but manages to make a living at it. I have a background as a kind of rock and roll musician. Years of that makes me deeply unemployable. <laughs> you know? So about 20 years ago, in order to afford the books he wanted, Martin began scouting, or searching for, rare books to sell to other collectors. I've just found a very nice book, which is pleasing me extraordinarily much. Today, he's considered one of the best, somebody who can find <laughs> books which can't be found. I've just made like three hundred dollars on that book. See, it's it's one of the few ways that hardcore bibliomaniacs can survive. Well, like Jackie, whose passion is. Une collection qui s'appelle Hard Boiled. Oui, oui. Uh, J'adore les, les romans américains. Uh, Et puis bon, j'ai vendu les livres que j'aimais. Well, he may be an avid reader of Le Hard Boiled, but his customers buy... Pour les textes, mais aussi pour l'objet, parce que c'est très beau. Look at them. They're the essence of film noir captured in a cover, bleak and betrayed. Maybe once these were just dime novels, but today they go for tens, hundreds, even thousands of dollars. C'est une vision... Uh, Des états unis you know, uh, l'American way of life. Uh. And of course, the high prices of these books is driven by the fact that they were once considered garbage and just thrown away. Or, as Martin likes to brag, If I make you pay 300 euros for a book, chances are you're going to look after it. So that book is now preserved because I've made it expensive for you. Well, you know, you may be getting the impression that this is a world inhabited by misfits, and to some extent that's true. And Martin comes from a pretty scruffy background. Uh, he's been uh, uh, on the run from the law. Um, he, he runs with a pretty loose group. OK, but uh, haven't you ever bought a book that you want to read, but you haven't? I usually have a pile of, you know, 20 books, and and they're sort of all, yes, that's going to be soon, that's going to be soon, that's going to be soon. And I, I actually need to have many more books than I'm actually going to read. Truth is, 
I have the same problem. I have a lot of books, and to me it seems perfectly reasonable, but I know between the piles on the floor and the cost of them all, it, it drives my wife crazy. Look, psychologists have done studies on this sort of behavior, and it's linked to, uh, you know, obsessive, compulsive, blah, blah, blah. I've gone, you know, I've lost the marriage to it. <laughs> There's no question, you know. Com combined with other character defects, but, but you know. <laughs> so my, my idea of uh, looks Mm -hmm. would be to have a lot of space to put all my books. But at least they're here and not going anywhere. Because when I'd hear Jackie rave about his freedom... Yeah, it all sounds great, but when he packs up at the end of a week-long fair, he's got a haul... Yeah, that's like uh, two tons of books, not including shelving. Well, it, it's true that... Um, you're not a serious book collector or book dealer unless you've had one herniated disc and unless you've ruined your knees. Uh, and on the whole, having to haul around a, a few tons of books is a small price to pay for being able to haul those books around when you want to. That, that's where the freedom lies.